hear my heart racing. Here I am, Lord. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to break that down. I'm going to... That was a good picture, though, wasn't it? It was a good picture. <laughs> I'm going to break that down. Look, I'm Helen. I'm a simple country girl. I am, from Drummond Tea, across the parish divide into Fork Hill. And I just live my life for God. That's me. You can read that, but that's who I am. And I want to talk about fear today. And I know it's been a beautiful mass. And I know that times against us but I want to take you on a journey today. Can I take you on a journey? Can I ask you to use your imaginations because God blessed us with the power of our imagination and I came here the first Encountering Christ after Christmas. That wasn't my first time here but I came and Terry was talking about St Stephen the first martyr. Do you remember that? Yeah and how fearless he was. And I'm telling you, it took all my willpower not to run up here and take that mic off, Terry. And that sat with me because, you see, there's a misconception. And people think that to live a fearless life, you know, to be strong, to be resilient, to be courageous, that it means you live your life without fear. And that's not right. That's not the truth. It means that you live your life knowing that fear will come at you every day. And fear will visit you many, many times. And yes, you're going to get those wonderful words of being strong, courageous. But I'm telling you, some of the most fearless people I know are the gentlest people you will ever meet. And if you're watching by webcam, if you're watching live, if you're watching in the future, I want to tell you that we've had miracles through that camera. And we want to know about them and we want to hear about them. And there's going to be healing here today. Amen. 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 Now when I get excited, I start to talk fast. So you just give me the nod to rein it back a little bit, okay? My abiding memory as a child, and I was a lovely child. My family's watching this. I really was a lovely child. <laughs> I was. But my abiding memory was being in school, and it doesn't matter what happened, it doesn't matter the circumstances. The teacher was trying to get me and my, peer, my friends to do something that I did not agree with. I find it wrong, I find it unjust. And I was six years of age, and I had a hell of lovely ringlets, I did, I had beautiful hair. And I said, no, miss, I'm not doing it. And she looked at me and she says, Helen, because my maiden name's McCoy, McCoy. And she says, Helen McCoy, you get in that corner right now. And she put me in the corner and she marched me over and she turned my back to the rest of the class. Now I could have felt shame and I could have felt embarrassment and I could have cried, but I didn't because I knew at the age of six that God had put an anointing on me to always speak the truth and to do it fearlessly. And that's nice flowery language, isn't it? To speak the truth. What does that mean? It's simple. I told you, I'm a simple country girl. To speak the word of God at all times. Who here is brave enough to speak the truth, to speak the word of God? And I'm getting some nods. And I'm getting some fear coming back at me. And that was my life. And I'm telling you that to put in context the testimony, the testimony that I'm going to share. Because we heard Terry and we heard Father Jerry say, your mess becomes your message. Your test becomes your Okay. Was that a good life? Childhood, let's just whiz through that. Teenage years, whiz through that. Because I was a good child and I was boring. I don't have anything to share. Until I was 19. Okay. When I was 19, life started coming at me hard and fast, and it was a blessing. It was a blessed life. I met my husband when I was 19. What a blessing. We're still married. Praise God. And he's got the patience, Job, I tell you. I'm not an easy woman to be married to. We got engaged when I was 22. I graduated when I was 21. Got engaged when I was 22. I got baptized in the Holy Spirit when I was 23. Can I get an Amen. Amen. And we're going to have life in the spirit here in Knockbridge. A weekend coming up soon and I want to see you there. I'm going to be there. I got married two days before my 24th birthday. Amen. And a blessing. I'm telling you, this was all good. 
I had my first child the next year when I was 25, and then I had my next child shortly after that. So I'm telling you, life was good, but it was coming at me hard. And I was so blessed that I didn't realize that I was stressed. And I might not be speaking the language of men here today, but I'm getting nods from some of the women here. You know what I mean, don't you? I was married young. I was learning to be a wife. I was learning to be a mother. And you know what I was doing? I was striving to be perfect. I wanted to be perfect. I wanted to be the perfect wife, the perfect mother, the perfect employee, the perfect daughter. I wanted to be the perfect child of God because I was still going to prayer groups. I wanted it all. And that's why I tell you the devil's sneaky. He's so sneaky. And I was so busy being busy that I was pleasing people. Do you remember Terry last week said, are we pleasing people or are we pleasing God? Well, I'll tell you the truth. I was trying to please everybody that I was pleasing nobody. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I had this voice in my head and this whisper, and I think some of you might get this as well. And I heard on a loop, you're not good enough. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting yeses here. You're a fake. You're a fraud. And everybody knows. Everybody knows. And this was on a constant loop, and I was busy, and I was tired. And I went to work one day. I was a civil servant. I was the tax man. And these voices were getting louder and louder. That dull whisper. And I'm sitting there at the desk one day. And do you, do you, do you know? I've looked into the science about this. Every human being gets between 50,000 and 70,000 thoughts a day. A day. And 80% of those thoughts are negative. They're negative. The science is there. And 95% of those negative thoughts, they're on a loop. They're on a loop. And I had a speeding train in my head. And I couldn't silence it. Tell me, does anybody know what I mean? Yeah. And I sat at work one day, and the voices were getting. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Miss. Thank you. Thank. You. That's better. Is that better? Yeah. Thank you. And I sat at work one day, and it was morning. And these voices, I couldn't quieten them. You're a fake. You're a fraud. You're never going to amount to anything. You're in a dead end job. You're useless. And I was blessed. I had a good husband, I had children, we were doing okay. And I couldn't quieten them. And my heart was racing. My heart was beating so fast and I had a pain in my chest. Yeah, and I'm getting nods and I know somebody's watching this and you know what I mean. And I started to feel that like the walls were coming in. And I thought in that moment I was gonna die. Have you ever had an anxiety attack? Has anybody here ever had an anxiety? Yeah, look, I'm getting hands up, never mind nods. And I turned to my boss, who was a gentleman, and I said, I'm not well. I'm not well. And he didn't hear me because we were in an office. And he looked at me again, and I said, I'm not well. And I must have looked on the outside how I felt on the inside. And he said, you're not well. <laughs> and I goes, yeah, I know. And I'm going to claim this is the first miracle of today because he said to me, you need a doctor. And he got me a doctor's appointment that same day, that same morning. Can you imagine? And he was, he was a blessing to me that day. And he says, well, I take you to the doctor. And he says, no, I'll do it myself. Because remember, I was faking it. I wanted to be perfect. I wanted to do it myself. And yep, me, myself, and I. And I says, no, I'll go to the doctor myself. And I find out later, do you know what that man did? And I tell you, when I say we need to have the eyes of God, he followed me from a distance to make sure I went to the doctor because he was so worried about the state of my mind. He was so worried, he thought I was going to harm myself. That's how unwell I was, folks. So when I say I was afraid, I remember, this is the girl who said she would stand for truth and be fearless. And I was afraid. And I went to the doctor, and I'll speed this up because you can guess where this is going. Doctor, I'm unwell, I'm crying. And 
He said, very kind, kind man, he says, um, yeah, yeah, you're describing anxiety and you've had a panic attack. Have some counselling and here's a prescription. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And let me be clear, and I want you to hear, and I'm praying that the Lord gives you ears to hear, I am not anti-medication, I'm not. Doctors are healers too. Am I getting an amen? Amen, amen. okay. When I went home and my family were making a fuss of me because remember, this is not this girl who said she would stand on the word of God. No. And I took the tablet and I woke up 18 hours later. 18 hours later. And I says, Lord, I can't do this. I'm a mummy. I have two wee ones, three and two. And Lord, I might be in pain and I might think I'm falling apart here, but I need to be present and I need to be awake. And I started faking it again. I started saying to the world, I'm okay. I'm okay. And I would wake up in the morning and the very first thought that would come to me was, how am I going to get through this day? Yeah. How am I going to get through this day? Because I'm telling you, anxiety is a thief and it will steal your joy. It will steal your peace. And it's not from God. And I would get into this cycle then I would wake in the morning and I would wake and I was afraid. And I wanted to control every minute of the day. You see, anxiety and control, they go hand in hand. And I started to just fake it. Monday to Friday weren't too bad because I could get up and I could go to work. Okay, I could come home, I could feed the kids, I could do the homework, I could do all of those things that... Women, I know I'm speaking to you here. And men, God bless you. I know you love good women too. Some days I would go to Mass. Okay, so I was still praying. That Mass. And then maybe we'd have a family day, but Saturdays. I have to tell you, Saturdays, I hated those Saturdays. And I use that word intentionally. And I don't use the word hate a lot, but I hated Saturdays. And why did I hate Saturdays? Because I couldn't fill the time. Couldn't fill the time. Are you still with me? Are you still with me? Okay. And I decided then that one of the things that I could do to fill the time, to control, was to go walking. And I love walking. And I would walk the roads and I would cry. And I would have music on because remember, I didn't want to be alone with my thoughts. Devil was whispering in my ear and he was whispering good. And it was around the time that smartphones started getting smarter. And maybe people started getting less smart. <laughs> and, uh, and I remember I downloaded a book. And I'm telling you, you knew me as a wee girl. You didn't see me without a book in my hand. I loved books. So I downloaded a book. And the very first book that I downloaded was by Joyce Mayer. Who knows Joyce Mayer? Yeah, yeah, I'm getting nods. M-E-Y-E-R. If you don't know her, you have to look her up. The Battlefield of the Mind. The first book that I downloaded, The Battlefield of the Mind. And I'm telling you, I rejoice in Joyce. I praise God for that woman. I do. And I don't have enough time here because I'm looking at the clock and I know... I can't go into all of that. Read the book. If you're not good at reading, if you're not much of a reader, you download it and you listen to it. And as I walked and I listened, I suddenly realised because... Do you ever hear that phrase, all brains and no common sense? Yeah? I'm a wee bit like that. Sometimes I'm all brains and no common sense and it takes me a little while to get things. And I realised I'm under attack. I'm in the biggest battle of my life here. I didn't realise. And I claimed to know the word of God. And the devil crept up on me. And I was blessed and I was stressed. And I started walking and I'm telling you, there's not too many roads around South Armagh that I hadn't walked. And I was praying and I was listening. And I was renouncing. I was doing all of this and I, I love the power of the imagination. And God calls who he calls, and I'm telling you, he's called this contemplative woman to be here as part of encountering Christ. And I would picture Jesus here beside me, and I would picture Mary here, and we were going walking, and we were going to battle. 
Can I get an amen for that? Because exactly. And then I started thinking, do you know what? I need more. I'm never going to win this. The devil's won some battles here, but I'm going to win the war. And I started walking. And I started saying, holy angels come and surround me and walk with me and battle with me. And I would pray. I said, Michael the Archangel, I want you down here right now. And I was demanding in my prayer. I was. And I would picture the angels surrounding me. And we heard, heard Father Jerry saying that today. The angels and I would survive. I would imagine they were around me. And I wanted more and I needed more. And I started calling on the saints. Any saint. Because I was still praying. I hadn't lost sight of God. I didn't know where he was. And I would call on St. Patrick, St. Bridget, St. Bernadette, St. Francis of Assisi, any saint, any saint that day. And let me tell you, do you know who my birthday saint is? And we've all got a birthday saint. And you, if you don't know who yours is, you go look it up because you've got a friend for life in that saint. My birthday saint is St. Joan of Arc. St. Joan of Arc. And I would say, Joan, you get your backside down here. And I did say that. I said, you come down here on your horse and your sword and your shield and we're going to battle. And that's what happened. I would battle. And then I would go home and I would feel weak. And I was still having anxiety and I was still having panic attacks. And then... The penny dropped again because I told you I'm all brains and no common sense and it takes God a long time sometimes to get through to me. And then I realized, hang on, if I'm doing all this walking and all this praying and, and I'm doing this, I need to do this every minute. I need to do this at home. And that's what I started doing. And I'd wake in the morning and my first thought was still, how am I going to get through this day? And I would challenge it. And I would say, that's not my thought, that's not from God. Can you say that after me? That's not my thought. That's not from God. And I would say, Lord, help me get through this day. See, I was changing the language that I was using. And I was trying to show gratitude. I was trying to be grateful and it wasn't easy. And this takes discipline. If you want to be fearless, you're going to have to put the work in. And I would run the tap and I would turn that into a prayer and I would say, thank God I've got running water. I mean, every minute of every day. And it took all my effort because I was still faking it. I was still trying to be perfect. I was, because I told you I would tell you the truth. And then a Saturday came and I took the kids to the park. And what did I tell you about Saturday? I hated Saturdays. And I was crying out to God. And I says, Lord, I'm doing everything. I'm praying. I'm trying to keep my eyes on you, God. I'm renouncing. I'm going to Mass. I'm receiving the sacraments here. You've got to meet me here, God. I need a sign. I need a sign. And I looked on the ground and I saw a miraculous medal. Amen. Amen. And I picked it up and held it. I still had anxiety. I was still having panic attacks, but I had hope. I had hope. And I continued doing what I was doing because I knew I was still in battle. I was. And then one day, I said, I'm going to adoration. And I was again, it was a small country church and I walked there. And I'm a little bit feisty sometimes when I pray. I am. You might be getting a sense of that. <laughs> and I said to God, and I said, Jesus, I've claimed you to be my best friend my entire life. And I've lived my life for you. And you know what? You're a lousy friend. <laughs> to tell you the truth, you suck. I said that. And I might have said a few other things that I really can't say here in God's house. And I said, I'm going in to spend time with you, Jesus. And I'm not coming out until I'm healed. I said that. And I need you to know if that's your prayer and that's your prayer of anguish, that's a good, holy, honest prayer. And if that's where you're at, that's your prayer. You go to the Old Testament, you'll find prayer after prayer like that. Moses prayed like that. If you want to find out more, you talk to Terry. And I 
jemand in. And I kneeled down and I started praying. And my heart was just so broken. It was still so broken. And I need to paint a picture in your imagination because this world is so broken. I need to give you something of beauty. And I'm sitting where you are in a different church, but I'm looking up at the blessed sacrament of Jesus in the monstrance. You might think, what's that word mean? It means, you know, that fancy gold thing, you know, that fancy gold thing that Jesus is in. And there was a stained glass window behind and I'm praying. And for the first time since I'd been baptized in the Holy Spirit all those years before, I started to pray in tongues. I get an amen for that. Amen. And I know for those of you who've been baptized in the Spirit, you know the beauty of what I'm saying to you. You've been gifted with that, but I know there's people here watching me and you're on, watching me through the camera and you're saying, oh, Helen, we were with you to that point. You're going to get a bit happy clappy now. I'm not, I'm not, not yet, I'm not. So let me keep it simple for you because I told you I'm a simple girl. If you're blessed with the gift of tongues, God's given you your own love language. And that's the prayer, the deepest prayer of your soul, the deepest desire. And I was praying. And when Jerry preached in his homily today about light, I don't know that I have the words to describe what happened, but I'm going to try. So I'm praying, and I'm praying in tongues. And I had asked for a miracle, I had. And the sun started coming through the stained glass window. And it hit the monstrance here. And the light started radiating in the church. I'm not joking, amen. 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 And the light of Christ had hit me. I was sitting in a pew. I'm not, I'm not making this up, I promise you. And in that moment, my heart was filled with love, with peace, with joy, and I was set free. Amen. Amen. And I was healed. And can I tell you a fact? Because I like facts. Do you know the name Helen is Greek? Do you know what it means? It means light. It means bright shining one. So that's a great testimony, isn't it? I mean, that's good. That's good. Thank you, God. I think that's good. Are you happy for me to take you a little bit longer in this journey? A little bit longer, yeah? Can I go on another little bit? So I returned to life. As it was, I was healed, I was set free, and it felt good. But I know that there's somebody here today, and you might be watching, and you might be saying, you know what, Helen, that's great, more power to you, but it means nothing to me. And I know my testimony, actually, is making somebody feel worse because you're locked in pain. And I presented to try and give hope, but yet I know if you're in pain and you're suffering, you can't see that, and you're lost. And Jerry said earlier about being in the fog and not being able to see, and I've been there. And I know you might be, and I said, I, said I, have a, I have a heart for women, but this is for women and this is for men to hear. And I know you might be struggling because you're trying to get an autism diagnosis for your child, and you're struggling and you're hanging on by just the last thread because you're out in public and they're having an autism meltdown and you see and feel the eyes of the others judging you and you've got that voice, remember that noise in your head telling you you're not good enough, you'll never be good enough and you're smiling and presenting this fake image of perfection to the world and you might be lonely, you might be in your home and not able to get out for any reason, illness, disability and you might have spoken to another soul for a week I know people who haven't spoken to another human being for a week. And loneliness is killing people. Loneliness is killing people. And you might have an addiction. And your marriage might be falling apart. And you might be sitting here today. And you might be watching and your body might be sore. And your body might be broken. Because you've been abused. And you've had the hiding of your life last night. And you're still presenting this image of perfection to the world. 
So I want you to know I hear you. I see you. God sees you. Because our God is a loving God. Do you agree? Yes. Our God is a God of mercy. Yes. Our God is a God of compassion. And he does not visit this pain on you. He doesn't. But he can take your brokenness. And he can transform it into something beautiful. But I need you to know that when I was set free, amen, amen. it wasn't the final chapter of a fairy tale. It wasn't. I was set free. And can we put Matthew up there, Seamus? Matthew, can we put Matthew's gospel up there, the rock? I was set free and I was standing on the rock firm. I really was. Because I was doing it. I was praying. I had my eyes on God. I was rejoicing, I was praying without ceasing, I was going to Mass, I was doing all that, I'm going to read that. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice, remember I said this is going to take effort, you're going to have to do this, is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain came down, and the streams rose, and the winds blew, and they beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. Amen. And that's one of my favorite scripture passages. So I'm telling you, the devil was furious that I was set free. He was, and he still is. So he started to get at me, he tried to get at me, through the people I love, through my family. And we've all got family members that are struggling, don't we, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. And I love my family, I do. And I say this with love because I said I would speak the truth. Most of my family who I love, they're lukewarm Catholics at best. They're lukewarm. So I had to battle not just for myself, but I now had to battle for them. And I'm just going to give you a, just a few things. A few things that happened in my family. Remember, not me. I was set free. But my family... A serious mental health breakdown requiring hospital admission, a life-changing diagnosis and lifetime medication. That happened in my family, remember, not me. Gambling addiction, alcohol addiction. Again, people I love and people I'm battling for. The sudden and traumatic death of my six-week-old nephew from an infection. My brother's son. Little Heather. Depression. More anxiety. Remember my family. My family. Family feuding. Will disputes. Eating disorder. Here's a word for you. I didn't know this word. Body dysmorphia. Well, look, I've got some nods. You get it. So when I say it, I know how hard it is to hear and receive a testimony. I know it. I know it. And Jerry, you didn't know this today, but I've been praying about this and sitting about on this for a long time, and I was trying to get the words to explain and to convey what, what's been sitting with me. And I'm telling you, it's a holy fury. There's a holy fury building in me, and there has been for a long time. And I speak it to women especially today, but men, you need to hear this. And I know there are good men here, and I know there's good men watching, and I thank God for you. But you know what? Some of you men are the problem. You're part of the problem. And I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of the pressures that this world is putting on women to be perfect. Yeah. The perfect life, the perfect body, the perfect house, the perfect marriage, the perfect job. And we've already got 70,000 thoughts coming at us from every angle. <laughs> And I thought it was bad 13 years ago when I was having anxiety. And now I watch, I've got a 15-year-old daughter and a 17-year-old son. And I'm saying, what are we doing? What are we doing? Are we fearless enough to fight for our children, for our young people, for ourselves? And I feel this holy fury building in me because this is, this is the crux of it. I am so angry 
that healing is being presented as something that you can go into a shop and buy. Do you know what I mean by that? I'm getting nods, okay? But let me explain. I am sick and tired of women who are falling apart and they're broken and they're searching and they're lost and they don't know what they're searching for. We know who they're searching for. We know, but they don't know. And I saw a pamphlet, I saw a leaflet in a beautician's and it said, monthly special, get your eyebrows and eyelashes done and you can have a 30 minute recce session for 20 pound. I am telling you, and I can't say this strongly enough, and I'm not anti-beauty by the way, I'm not, I'm not. Look at that fabulous picture that was up there earlier on, I mean, I paid good money for that picture, okay? <laughs> and I have a great beautician, and Lord knows her work's getting harder and harder, <laughs> okay? And we should look good, and we should look after what we have, we absolutely should. But I need to say this, and you need to hear this, I'm asking you to have ears to hear. If you go and you receive these new age treatments that are dressed up and called whatever they're calling them out there in the world, you're opening the door to the occult. You are. And you're inviting Satan in. And I have lost friends because I've said this and I've challenged this and I know I will lose more people over this, but I will not stop standing up for what is truth. And if you have, through ignorance, Remember, I told you sometimes I'm all brains and no common sense, but if you have been there and you have received Reiki or any of these new age things, fortune telling, tea leaf, whatever, you come and you talk to anybody in a blue fleece after here and we'll tell you about online ministry and how you can link in with that here. Because you're going to need help for this. You're going to need help. And I'm part of that team too. You come talk to us. But you know what? That's not even why I'm angry. Because I thought about this and I prayed about it. I'm angry because some of us claim to be missionary, intentional disciples, and we do, and we say we know and we love Jesus, and we're not telling the world, do you understand what I'm saying? And we're sitting on the greatest gift that has ever been given, and we're keeping it for ourselves, and we're standing up there and we're saying how much we love God. That's what Terry said last week, are we living to please people? Are we living to please God? And I'm including myself in that too. I've sat in this testimony for 13 years. 13 years I've sat in this. Who's willing to be fearless enough to stand with me and to fight for our women and our young people? And men, we need you too. You getting the men? Amen. Amen. Okay. You still with me? I know. I know the tea's up there. I know the tea's ruin okay but I want you to leave here today and I know I'm coming at you hard and fast here I know I am but come and talk to me afterwards I want you to have a sense of an action plan of what to do now okay because I'm telling you one of the blessings that I did get through anxiety was I know how to get stuff done <laughs> I can make a great to-do list and work through it and in sharing of my testimony, without even realizing it, it's been dripping in scripture. Everything I say is founded on the word of God. Do you believe me? Do you think I'm telling the truth? Do you think I'm fearless? Yeah. I have to battle every day to be fearless and if I can do it, you can do it. So what do you do? First thing, and I've said it already, you keep your eyes on God. Seamus, can we put that one up there please? I think it's Psalm 25. My eyes are always on the Lord, for he rescues me from the traps of my enemies. Amen. And I know that's hard. When you're in the fog and if you're in the pain and you're suffering and you can't see God, it's very hard to keep your eyes on somebody if you can't see God. So do you know what you do if that happens? You turn and you look at your neighbor. You turn and you look at the person next to you. The C.S. Lewis. Who knows C.S. Lewis? He wrote The Lion, the Witch, and the Water up here. Do you know what he said? Do you know what he wrote? Next to the Blessed Sacrament, the holiest object that will ever be presented to your senses is your neighbour. Okay, so you're with me. You're going to keep your eyes on God. 
Are you gonna do it? Yes. Okay. Let me get you. I want a wee bit more fire in your belly here. <laughs> and we go to Thessalonian. One Thessalonian. Oh, actually, Shane, let's just stop there for a second. That's a really good point. So glad, Shane, said that that came up. And it's back to what I was saying about women with all of these new age, new age treatments that they're throwing at us. Jesus wants us to have peace. He does. Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. So it's in scripture. Jesus is aware that you will be presented with what appears to be peace, but it's not good. It's not from God. So if you're doubting the authenticity of what I'm saying, there's it there. There's it there. Okay. Can I let that sit with you? Okay. Thanks. Yeah. That's all right, yeah, let's move on to Thessalonians. Because I'm conscious you're tired and I want to tie all this together for you. So I think look, and what it says is basically that we need to rejoice. We need to rejoice. Can I tell you, to rejoice does not mean you're always going to be happy. Rejoicing does not mean you're going to be happy. But it's back to what I said about gratitude, remember? Okay. So I want you giving thanks and glory to God for everything, through your pain, through your suffering, every single thing. And if that's as much as running the tap and thanking God that you've got running water, you do that. And you pray without ceasing. Now I don't mean that you have to be praying the rosary from 7 o'clock in the morning to 9 o'clock at night. I do want you to pray the rosary, by the way. I really do. I want you to pray all the prayers. Remember, I was greedy. I wanted a whole army. I want you to have all the prayers. Okay? But I want you to have a love language to God and I want you to constantly be praying. And if the only prayer that you can start with is Jesus' holy name, if all you can start with is Jesus, Jesus, then that's where you start. Do you know why I'm telling you to do that? And I'm telling you because you need to drown out the noise in your head and the lies that Satan will try to get at you again and he will get at you and you might not have anxiety You might have an addiction, you might have depression, you might have something else going on, but you've got to pray without ceasing. Does that make sense? Okay, Okay. I'm starting to see everybody waking up a little bit. I'm going to give you these simple, I told you I'd keep it simple. Go to Mass. If you're watching, go to Mass. And I know that the webcam was brilliant through COVID because we could be connected Go to Mass. I can't say it clearer than that. And why? Why do you need to go to Mass? Because you need the Eucharist. You can't do this on your own. You need Jesus. You need Jesus living inside of you and you cannot do it on your own. So come to Mass. Forgiveness. Oh, I could talk to you for hours about forgiveness, but I don't. Because we're getting ready for a cup of tea and I want to pray before we leave here today. If you're carrying hurt, pain, resentment, you're poisoning yourself. And you need to forgive. You need to go to confessions. If you want my advice and you want my help and you want me to tell you what you need to do to become fearless, I'm telling you, you keep your eyes on God, you rejoice, you pray without ceasing, you go to Mass, you receive the Eucharist, go to adoration, and you go to confessions. And I'm telling you, Satan will come at you hard and he'll come at you fast because he knows that you're going to make your life for Christ. Amen. 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 Okay. You've been very patient. You've been very good. <laughs> Can I ask you to stand for a minute? I'm going to wrap all this together. Now, men, I don't want for one second to come across as empty. Men, I, I'm not. I promise you, I'm not. But I want to make an appeal to the women that are here today. I want to ask you to come up to me here. And we're going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to be led by Joe's going to sing us a beautiful hymn. And with your permission, I'd like to pray with you. I'm not going to put you on the spot. I want to ask you to dedicate your life to Christ again. And if you've already done that, praise God. 
But I'm telling you what, I dedicate my life to Christ every day. Every day. So if you've already done it, you come up. And if you're broken, and I feel the Spirit is very, very strong when I say this. If any of you here or watching, if you're in a situation and you're not safe, and you're being abused, and you're being hurt, that's not okay. That's not okay. And we need to get you safe. And you come talk to somebody. And if you're watching through the webcam and you don't know who to turn to, you come here next week. You reach out. Amen. Amen. And I'm telling you, because if people, and I mean men and women, men and women, had been believed and had been allowed to speak out through the decades of this church in Ireland, through all of the abuse scandals, I am telling you, we would not have to be here on a Sunday afternoon to try and bring life to a church that's dying in Ireland because it would already be alive. Do you agree? Great. So women, come up. Don't leave me here on my own. Start coming up. Start coming up. And men, I'm not leaving men because I'm going to get Terry and Father Jerry to come to you men in a minute because we do need strong men. We do. We do. Can I just qualify that? Yeah. Thank you. There's men in these ministry, we know them. But Helen, you see, it seems to be Helen's got an anointing for women. I've got an anointing for men. I've been in men's ministry all over the world. And men can deal with men, and women can deal with women. But women, this is probably the majority of women suffer with this. This body, what was it called? It was formula? This body dysmorphia. This yeah. the perfect perfection. Body, perfect yeah. woman. Yeah. This perfection is coming to women in the church. So it really is a big thing. I know there's many of you that you pray for. We know Father Jeremy is in the midst of the yeah. as well. Yeah. Can we sing, maybe we should sing, can we sing this about worship together before yeah. Helen prays? Drop yeah, the that's what we're going to do. Is that okay? Yeah. Let's just worship together. Drop the cross together. Drop the cross together. Let's worship together. Never let me go I lay it all down again Taste it but I'm your You are my desire Will do. There's nothing else to take your place to feel the warmth of your grace. Help me find the way, bring me back to you. Bring me 
Is that okay? Okay. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I need you. I know you are here, Lord Jesus. I know you are with me, Jesus. And I am sorry if I ever doubted that. I ask for your forgiveness. I dedicate my life to you, Jesus. Jesus, I am yours. I come here now, Lord, to lay my panic, my anxiety, my depression, my fear at your feet because I belong to Jesus. And when I am crushed, by fear and worry please remind me of your healing power Jesus I need a miracle I trust in you Jesus and I know I can't beat this this fear on my own I know you have already paid the ultimate price to carry my pain thank you Jesus I love you Jesus for you are my rock my fortress and my protector you are my shield and I will call out your holy name because you are worthy to be praised Heal me, Jesus, and let me shelter, safe in your love, held by your grace, and freed by your truth. Amen.